Hello, Community Fellowship family. Uh, this is Rick Benware, one of the elders here and ministry partners. Uh, hope you're all doing well at home, um, as most of us are. And uh, this is a really interesting time we're all facing uh, during the past few weeks. And now I think we're approaching at least a couple months or more. I mean, the norms of our lives have been upended and turned around. And so many of us are having to learn to live at home, to be loving and patient with each other. And um, I thought I would share just a few things what God's been teaching me. And I'm still learning, still trying to figure things out. Um, but uh, let me ask you something. What do you do when your life has been un upended by circumstances and when it's out of your control, when, when you face severe or minor trials, temptations, or maybe you're fighting uh, a cyclical habitual sin? Um, be before you do all of that, um, where does your mind really go for the first? I think many of you know that we're supposed to go to God's Word, we're supposed to pray, we're supposed to ask others to pray for us and with us, but where does your mind go? And let me encourage you today with what the Lord's been teaching me a little bit, but before I get started, I thought I would open up with a song with Give Me Jesus. Not the whole song, but a little bit of it. So, in the morning when I rise, in the morning, when I rise in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus. And give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. I tell you, um, I think there's nothing sweeter than either listening or praising or worshiping the Lord. And that's some of the things I try to do, is just, I can't always calm my heart and my mind and things, I'm, things are racing in my mind sometimes, but I know we can stop and be still and know that He is God. You know, Psalm 46 talks about that, talks about God as our ever-present help, our refuge. He's, but later on at the end, he talks about, God reminds us to be still and know that he is God. And sometimes music and worship and the hymns do that. Um, you can talk to Joseph, Pastor Joseph, about all the different songs that we do and, and worship services. But sometimes the words are, are just extremely helpful, I think, for me. You know, in, in the last three years on earth, Jesus modeled for us a life of complete obedience to his Father, his Heavenly Father. And there's a lot that can be said on this topic, and many Christian theologians, pastors, and teachers can provide way more content here. I only have a few minutes, but, you know, um, today I kind of want to focus on that one area, and I mentioned it already, solitude and prayer before our Heavenly Father. How do we slow down? How do we calm our hearts and our minds and say, God, I want to sit at your, Lord Jesus, I want to sit at your feet. I want to know what is your will? What do you want me to do here? Who do I need to be at this time? And Jesus taught us that, right? He taught us what it meant to his own father. To his own father was sovereign. His will was what mattered. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He even said, you know, when they said, you know, how do we pray? He says, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in heaven, who is in secret. Um, a lot of times people go to the Lord's Prayer and they, they forget about that verse. But Jesus, the first thing he says is, go into your room, shut the door, you know, be alone with your Heavenly Father. Then he says, our Father who art in heaven. And right away Jesus is saying, Father, you're sovereign. It's you. It's your will. This is all you. I'm yours. And I think that is a really hard thing to remind ourselves at. And then Jesus also modeled solitude. We read in all the Gospels that what does he do? Early in the morning, we read in Mark 135, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And many times we read that Jesus was in the middle of maybe he had uh, been doing healing and, and these miraculous healings. And then in Mark 1, we read that he goes off, and the disciples are like, well, Jesus, there's more people to heal, kind of like an attitude. And he's like, no. We're going on to the next town. This is what I'm here for. And so that's what we have to remind ourselves. If, if Jesus, God's son, is saying, I have to spend time with my father, we have to stop. 
whatever we're doing and just lay these things before the Lord, but be quiet, be calm before him. The other thing is like when you look at the apostles and Paul, you look, in the, you look throughout the book of Acts, they prayed. And many times it, they say they knelt down and prayed or they prayed. They, they prayed over this person before any healing was done. They prayed. So every time they gave us the example. Um, I mentioned Psalm 46.1. Here it is. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear through, though the earth gives away, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Selah. And then the last verse, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Remember that. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Selah. So when you're in the midst of life's storms, remember Jesus in the boat with his disciples and he fell asleep and the storm arose and disciples are like, Lord, Lord, wake up. Aren't you worried about us? We, we're going to die. And he just says what? He says, peace, be still. And Jesus is the only person, God is the only person that can actually calm our hearts, provide that perfect peace that passes all understanding. So as you're wrestling and going through stuff day to day, remember that God wants us to approach him. He says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. It's a promise. You know, um, and we got to remember that, that, that there is times in which we don't know when God can use us in other people's lives. And Ravi Zacharias recently gave a message. This is three years ago. It was called Living a Life Used by God. So as you're quieting your heart, as you're going to solitude, you're praying and you're for God's will, remember that God can use us then in the midst of that storm, that trial, the temptation, whatever we're wrestling with, and we lay it before Jesus' feet, God can use us, even when you least expect it. Ravi says, don't ever as underestimate what God can do through you. There's a story where John Wesley, when he was five years old, he was one of 12 children. And their fire in the middle of the night, was the, the house was on fire, engulfed in flames. And they thought they got all their children out, but they just, a neighbor discovered that John Wesley was still in the house. He was five years old. The neighbor built a human ladder and they saved John Wesley, whereas the parents thought that he was gone. He was, he was taken out. So even then, God used this man, this neighbor, to build a human ladder to rescue John. Can you imagine life today without John Wesley, without all the wonderful teaching, with all the wonderful hymns? Um, you look at um, lives like, there was a story where Ravi shared this, that um, Early in its days, uh, Youth for Christ founder Tori Johnson and the board found out that they, they were going to have a, a speaker, a famous speaker, come in. He canceled last minute. So it was Tori's task to go get a new uh, speaker. And um, he found Billy Graham. The board had never heard of this young man. Never. And Tori says, I really want him to speak. Well, Billy Graham spoke, Tori, Tori Johnson was not nearby, and, and the message is over, and, and he said, Billy, Tori said, Billy, how did the message go? He said, it didn't go very well at all. And, and Tori said, well, why not? He said, because only one, one, one young man raised his hand and, and to accept Christ. And Tori said, well, who was that man? It was Warren Wiersbe. And many of you know Warren Wiersbe and what contributions he's made to the gospel and, and many things that we've been able to read and, and, and share from. So don't ever underestimate. Um, as, you're, as I close, I want to pray for all of you. I want to tell you how much uh, we love you as pastors and elders, and we're praying for you constantly. Um, many of us elders, um, we have those of you that are ministry partners, you should have a, a go-to elder, an elder that can pray for you. And if you need anything from us, let us know. Obviously, you can pray. Uh, you can have, reach out to the pastors and our staff too. But let me pray for you now and just ask the Lord to uh, uh, minister to you. So, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you for the regular attenders here at Community Fellowship. Oh God, we pray that you would work in and through these men, women, youth, and children. We pray for your hand of protection. We pray that you, God, would be ever-present with them, that you would be that ever-present help, that refuge, 
their fortress, that they remember if they're still before you, you are always God, you're always with us. You will never leave us, you'll never forsake us. Greater are you in us than he that is in the world. And Lord, we love you and thank you. I pray that you bless our family of community fellowship. Use us for your glory. Help us to be the hands, feet, the voices of you, Jesus, in our neighborhoods, within our families. I pray for your hand of blessing on all of our folks from Community Fellowship. We pray in your powerful and precious name, Jesus. Amen.